this play, I think, could be actually a really interesting indicator in how the Super Bowl could go. So this is a game in the conference championship game against uh, you know, Detroit and San Francisco. You see Chase Young here. Got a, got a bit of a tough matchup. Taylor Decker, one of the better tackles in football. Watch as when this play begins, you see that, okay, what's he going to try and do? You can see what he's trying to do. Try to get his right arm over Decker, pull off the swim move, get the, you know, to the inside and get towards Jared Goff. That's what he's hoping to see, you know, hoping to pull off here. Well, how's it going to work? As you see, Decker is able to win that matchup, but, oh, wait, what happened over there? Nick Bosa gets the sack. Nick Bosa is a dominant force, and I've already made a whole video breaking down how I think he will, you know, go after these Kansas City tackles and what could happen. The question is, if he gets extra attention, can Nick Bosa be the guy to get some wins? If you look at his pro football focus grades this season, he's been okay. It, it, I don't think he's been as bad as people make him out to be, uh, you know, even watching the film. I don't think he's been as bad as people make him out to be, but it hasn't been spectacular either. PFF does say he's the 32nd ranked uh, pass rusher but for, and 40th ranked edge rusher overall, which is a good number two option, which is what the Niners thought they were trading for him, although those numbers have been down since playing for San Francisco. But to me, what's interesting about all of this is, again, we talk about Bosa and how much attention he's going to get. He's probably going to get double teamed a lot. But you look at the two tackles for Kansas City. First, you have Jawan Taylor, who's currently the 46th ranked pass blocker and 77th out of 79 uh, ranked run blockers. And again, keep in mind, there's a lot more eligible edge rushers than tackles. So, you know, 40th best for an edge rusher is better than 40th best for a tackle but Donovan Smith, the other guy who, you know, uh, 53rd ranked pass blocker on the season, uh, you know, uh, also not very good in the run blocking, uh, you know, 61st out of 81 overall tackles uh, this season. I didn't bring it up, but Taylor, uh, 73rd out of 81 eligible tackles this season. So the obvious question to me is if Bosa is on one side, he's probably going to get double teamed. What do you do with the other side? Can Chase Young, can this be his breakout game? And first, going over to something like this, we have to ask the question, do the Chiefs bring extra attention to players? And the answer has mostly been yes this season. Now, again, famously in the Super Bowl, I brought this up in my Nick Bosa video as well. Famously in the Super Bowl, they uh, kind of did not help out their tackles a lot, even though they obviously had you know two injured tackles. That didn't go very well for them, and since then, they have you know not made that mistake again, really. Like you see on this play, it's you know Max Crosby. So you're going to see that, you know, a Clyde Ebridge layer on that play kind of comes in and for Crosby here, he essentially backs off and is going to try to figure out a way to impact the play somewhere else uh, as opposed to just, you know, uh, rushing forward. So, you know, giving extra attention to Bosa seems to be the good idea. But that brings us to something like this, which is a Chase Young one-on-one -on -one matchup, which is something we have to talk about is, again... Yes, you know, Bosa is amazing, but if he's double teamed, you're going to have to find pressure elsewhere. And Chase Young, he is the main guy. He's not the only guy for the 49ers. They obviously have, you know, players on the interior that can make some plays. You know, Cleveland Furl gets a decent amount of snaps. Randy Gregory has actually gotten a decent amount of snaps uh, as of late, but like, you know, let's be honest, Chase Young's better than those options. Chase Young is the guy on the edge that they want to see, you know, come through. Well, let's see how he does on this play. It's Zach Tom who he's going up against. The tackle for the Packers, who's actually had a really nice season this year. But watch what happens. Right off the bat, you see Chase Young. You know, he's going to kind of overpower Tom a little bit, right? I mean, Tom does get driven pretty far back. You know, uh, Young isn't able to quite win perfectly cleanly to get a sack or anything like that. But if this play developed, I wonder if he could have. So that's the benefit, is Young definitely has shown flashes of being able to disrupt the quarterback, being able to get some wins, maybe in smaller senses than you're used to. What he hasn't really done a great job of for the 49ers is actually get to the quarterback or get splash plays. Because like this, yeah, sure, it's disrupting Jordan Love, but Love can still make a play here. As you see, Love gets the ball out and they're able to pick up a first down on that play. So, you know, again, that's not a terrible play by Chase Young at all, but at the end of the day, you know, as a general rule, I do agree that, like, we should look at pressures, not uh, sacks. We should look at, you know, watch the film or, like, look at advanced stats and see how often are you actually winning as opposed to, you know, just what's your sack count. But in the Super Bowl, you got to find a way to make plays. And Chase Young has just two and a half sacks this season. He's going to have to find a way to, I think, impact the quarterback if he is going to be out there for the majority of the snaps, which I think he will be. 
Although this is something I find interesting that I brought up in my Nick Bosa video about Bosa, but I think for Young, it's kind of similar. So first, you know, uh, it's going to be kind of a play action. So Young's going to kind of get extra attention here. You know, they're definitely paying more attention to just the edge rusher, whoever ended up being on this play. It's Young on this one. But if it was flipped, they would have done it with, you know, who, whichever edge rusher is there. Watch as, you know, you actually have a guard pull over. He's the one who's, you know, blocking Chase Young. And, you know, it's a good block. And this is Ellington Jenkins, a really good uh, offensive lineman for Green Bay. So it makes sense. Like, sure, I'm not bringing up this play to criticize Chase Young. What I'm doing is saying there's another aspect to Chase Young's game, and that is the can he chase down Patrick Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes, incredible athlete. Well, having a good athlete on, you know, uh, the edge, we know Bosa is a great athlete on the edge. Young might be able to come through and make a play here as well. Like on this one, you see that Jordan Love gets towards the outside, but Young is able to reach out and kind of help disrupt him. Is that something we could see, you know, uh, the 49ers do? That Young was able to do that on Jordan Love there, but let's be honest. As much as we like Jordan Love, he is not Patrick Mahomes. So, you know, it should be interesting. But here's something Young can't do. And I've seen Young do this a decent amount. This just can't. And honestly, Bosa does it a decent amount as well. But they can't do it here. Where Watch what's going to happen. So Young getting some extra attention. Which, like I said, don't think it's going to happen a ton this game of that, you know, in the Super Bowl. Don't think he's going to get a ton of extra attention. But I could see him getting some extra attention. But like on this play, you see he kind of gets bumped over the middle. And now he's saying, oh, okay, well, let me try and see if I can get you straight through the quarterback over the middle. No, no, don't do that against uh, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes will see this in an instant. He'll get to the outside and he'll make a play happen. Don't even consider doing something like this if you're Chase Young. That has to be a point of emphasis in the coaching for the 49ers. On this play, it was picked up nicely by Green Bay, which would really be a disaster. And then Jordan Love went long, and then there was the big pass interference penalty, if you remember that point in the game. But, you know, uh, for Young itself, that is just something you have to be very careful of if you're Chase Young. And again, I do think that the 49ers will be careful of it. And like, I know people like to hate on Chase Young. I do think there is some, I don't know if he, listen, he's not worth a number two overall pick, right? We can say that for sure. But he still is a really good run defender, which I haven't talked about. Maybe he's more of a Jadavian Clowney than he is, uh, you know, an Aiden Hutchinson uh, for these guys that were drafted super high up. But again, I do think there is an opportunity for him to get a win or two there. Now, will he be able to get them homes is another question. But going over to my final uh, chart thing, which again, uh, I'm going to say this every time. Don't take this too seriously. It's just more of a, a thing for fun. But, you know, for each of my videos I've made, I'm giving each team uh, plus or minus five points for how I view their matchup here. So for, again, uh, not in, a, any, in any way a scientific way to measure who would win. Just a fun thing to do. Chase Young, I'm giving a plus two for the 49ers. I, that feels fair to me. I do think that, that the tackles for, you know, four to four uh, Chiefs aren't great. I think Young is an okay player. I think I would say a good player, just not a great one. Uh, and I would say that he should be able to find ways to get, you know, some wins. And even, you know, when Mahomes starts to scramble, he might be able to chase him down as well. No pun intended. So, yeah, definitely, you know, uh, things to like about Chase Young in this matchup. But maybe not things to be horrified by if you're a uh, Chiefs fan. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.